Hello everyone, I'm Chen Zhi. And we're going to introduce the work on multi-cells non-malleable structures and its applications. This is a joint work with Vipo Goyo and Akshirin Srinivasan. I will start by introducing what is a true source non-malleable structure. The notion is introduced by Charigachi and Bruce Swami in 2014. So in this setting, you have two independent weak random sources named X1 and X2. So here the weak means that both sources are not uniformly random. And then you want to use an extractor to extract n bit randomness from the sources that are close to uniform. And further, the input sources can be tempered independently by arbitrary tempering functions. And the security requires that the tempered output is either the same as the original one or is independent which means the value is destroyed. So here the randomness of a source is measured by its mean entropy. So if the mean entropy of the source is greater than K, then it means for any X, the probability that the source is equal to X is less than two to the minus K. So intuitively, the source has higher mean entropy, which means it contains more randomness. And we assume the X1 and X2 are in bit sources with mean entropy K. They are also called NK sources. And more formally, the non-malleability is defined as the joint distribution of the original output and the temporal output is absolutely close to a joint distribution of two N bit strings, where the first one is uniformly random and the second one is either the same or independent of the first. And the epsilon here is called the arrow of the non-malleable extractor. So in this work, we introduce a new notion called multi-source non-malleable extractor, which is a generalization of the two-source one. And instead of two-source, now we have as independent NK sources. And similarly, each source can be tempered independently by arbitrary functions. And then we can define the security in the same way. However, it is not hard to see that this definition is actually weaker than the two-source one since we can build such a multi-source non-malleable extractor by just applying the two-source non-malleable extractor to the first two sources and then ignoring the rest. And in fact, there's no previous result considering cases beyond the independent tempering. So in this work, we mainly focus on the following question. Can we protect against the tempering function that temper multiple sources together? And then what is the main entropy is required and what is the average? So the most general model one could consider here is the overlapping joint tempering. So in such a tempering, for each i, the tempering function can depend on an arbitrary set of input sources Ti. We also mentioned that this tempering model is previously proposed by Gauri and Kumo in 2018, but it worked in the context of non-malleable sequence sharing. In the context of non-malleable extractor, no previous result considered this model since they only consider two source case. However, it is hard to protect against the general overlapping joint tempering. So instead, we consider a more restricted tempering model called cover-free tempering, which is overlapping tempering with some constraints. So given the overlapping tempering, we say it is I cover-free if there exists an XJ such so that no tempering set TK contains both XI and XJ. So for example, here for I equal to one, you can see that X1 and X4 does not contain in any at TK. We say it's cover-free tempering if it is I cover-free for each I and S. We'll see that this tempering model includes a rich class of tempering functions. For example, it contains the independent tempering, which I already mentioned before, and it contains this joint tempering. So this joint tempering means the sources are divided into at least two groups so that the sources in each group are tempered together. Also, the cover-free tempering is strictly richer than the destroying tempering, as it contains some fancy tempering functions such as following. The tempering of each xi, which depends on both xi and xi plus one. So it is not destroying tempering, but it is cover-free since the xi is not tempered together with the xi plus two. Now I'm going to summarize the main contributions. The first introduced the notion of multi-source non-malleable extractor. And then we give an efficient construction of the S-source non-malleable extractor against the cover-free tempering, 
for any constant s greater or equal to two. The main entropy requirement of our construction is linear in N with negligible error and polynomial output lens. Also, the construction satisfies the property called efficiently pre-image sampleable, which means that given any output, one can efficiently do sampling over its pre-image. Using similar techniques, we further resolve some open problems in areas of non malleable secret sharing and network structure, which I will discuss in more details now. For non malleable secret sharing, the notion is first proposed by Gaurav and Kumar in 2018. So in this setting, suppose you have a secret M and you want to split the secret into N shares with a threshold T, such that given any T or more shares, one can reconstruct the secret M. And also, any T minus one shares contains no information about M. We call such a scheme T out of N secret sharing. And further, the non-malleability is considered in a case that each sharing might be tempered by the adversary. And the security guarantees that any tempering attacks either preserve the original secret or completely destroy it, which means the secret recovered from T or more tempered shares are independent of the origin. For the prior work, the original paper considered only a restrictive version of destroying tempering. More precisely, their construction does not work in a case when the shares are divided into two destroying tempering sets of equal size. And in their follow-up work, though they can protect against cover-free tempering, their construction only worked for n out of n secret sharing. And in this work, we give a construction of t out of n non-malleable secret sharing against cover-free tempering for any t between 2 and n. We also show that our multi-source non-malleable structure can be used to construct network structures that are improved over previous results. So the problem of network structures naturally arise in the context where they are P processors, and each has access to a weak random source independent of others, and they want to get uniform randomness by communicating with each other. And further, some processors might be malicious corrupted which means they can behave arbitrarily. And the security should guarantee that at least some of the honest processor can output uniform randomness, even given all the messages sent during the protocol. So for the prior work, uh, either the construction cannot extract uniform randomness for all the honest processor, or it is in a computational setting and requires exponential hardness assumption. And in this work, we give a construction of network structure. It can always extract uniform randomness for all the honest processors. And also, it works in information theoretical setting. Uh, and it can tolerate up to P minus two malicious corruptions, which is optimal. And it requires only a single round of communication. So now I will briefly introduce our construction for the multi source non malleable extractor and give some intuitions and ideas behind it. So our starting point is the following construction. For simplicity, we only construct three source here, and it's not hard to extend the ideas to general multi-source setting. So for three sources, x1, x2, and x3, we first force each source into two parts as follows. And then for each x subscript i and yi, we use a two-source non-malleable extractor to extract randomness as zi. And finally, we all export all values of d1, d2, and d3 to get the output z. And then we'll see that each x subscript i and yi are from different sources, and thus they are independent, even given the rest of the sources. So there is a hope that we can reduce the all security to the underlying two-source non-malleable extractor. Also, this construction is efficiently pre-image sampleable if the underlying two-source non-malleable extractor is efficiently pre-image sampleable. Uh, intuitively, this is because the construction has a tree-like structure. So for here, given an output z, one can efficiently sample z1, z2, and z3. And then we can do pre-image sampling on each two-source non-malleable extractor to get the x superscript i and yi. And finally, the input source x1, x two and x three can be reconstructed from all the x superscript i and yi. 
However, there's a problem with this construction. So consider the case where the input sources x1, x2 are tempered together and x3 are tempered independently. So this is a destroying tempering. Since the first two input sources are tempered together, the x superscript i and yi can be tempered together. This is a fatal problem since the adversary now takes a fully control of the output of the first two source non malleable extractor. For example, it can temper the value of the x superscript i and yi together so that the temper output z1 is equal to the original z1 x always one. And then the final temper output will be also equal to the original output z x always one, which means that they are strongly related, but they are not the same. So therefore the security is totally broken. So now I will introduce our main construction and bypass the previous problem. So instead of forcing each source into two parts, now we force each xi into xi1, xi2, xi3, and yi. And then we compute the x superscript i by x all the value in the i's column. By doing this, we'll see that each x superscript i depends on all three previous sources, which means the previous attack will not work. So finally, the output z is computed in the same way as in the previous construction. Also, following similar idea, we can show that this construction is also efficiently pre-image sampleable. Now I will talk about some intuitions behind the security proof of our construction. Roughly speaking, the goal here is to show that the temporal output Z tilde is either the same as the original output Z or is independent of it. And the main idea is to use a hybrid argument to show that each one of the Z1 tilde, Z2 tilde, and Z3 tilde is either equal to one of the Z1, Z2, Z3 or independent of all of them. Then there are two cases. So the first case is that all the Z to the I is a permutation of the original Z I. For example, suppose the Z1 to the is equal to Z2, Z2 to the is equal to Z3, and Z3 to the is equal to Z1. In this case, we'll see the temporal output is the same as the original output Z. And the second case is that one of the Z I is missing. So for example, the to the Z1 is equal to Z2, and to the Z2 is equal to Z3. However, the two dot z3 is equal to some random variable d that is independent of all z1, z2, and z3. And in this case, we can show that z2 dot is independent of z. So why it is the case? So one observation is that the z1 is uniformly random given the z2 and z3. To prove it, we can fix all the input sources except the y1 and x3 one. So then we will see that x3 and x2 are also fixed, which means that the z1 and z2 are also fixed. Then since the y1 and x3 one can still have some randomness and they are independent by the security of the underlying two source non malleable extractor, the z1 is close to uniform given the z2 and z3. And therefore, given the z2 and z3, we know that z2 will be fixed but the Z is still close to uniform. And thus it implies that Z tilde is independent of Z. So now I will give some intuition behind the proof of the main hybrid argument. Recall the goal here is to show that each one of the tilde ZI is either equal to one of the ZI or independent of all of them. A key step in proving the above is to show the following. So given the X2, Y2 and X3, Y3, for each I, the ZI tilde is either equal or independent of the original Z1. The proof of this key step contains most of our main techniques. And therefore, for the rest of our talk, we will mainly focus on the idea behind this proof. Recall that the ZI tilde and Z1 are the output from the two source non malleable extractor. Therefore, the idea here is to reduce the problem to the security of the underlying two source non malleable extractor. Here is a rough proof idea. So suppose we consider the tempering function F12 and G3, where F12 temper the first two source together and the G3 temper the third source independently. And the idea is to first fix all the input sources except the Y1 and X31. Then as we argued before, the X superscript one and Y1 are independent sources. 
Therefore, in order to use the property of the underlying non-malleable structure, we just need to show that x1 tilde and y1 tilde can be represented as an independent time bring of the x1 and y1. So first for the y1 tilde and y2 tilde. So given y1, since all the parts in x1, x2 are fixed, by the tempering function f12, one can compute the y1 tilde and y2 tilde. Then let's consider the case for x1 tilde and x2 tilde. So given the x1, similarly to the previous case, one can compute the x31 tilde and x32 tilde. However, it is not enough to compute the x1 tilde and x2 tilde since they also depend on the values of the x11 tilde, x12 tilde, and x21 tilde, and x22 tilde. And we cannot compute those values from x1. Then one observation here is that those values can actually compute it from y1. Therefore, the idea here is to view those temporal value as leakage from the y1 and use the liquid resilient to source non-malleable structure. Well, formally, here we use what we call unbalanced liquid resilient two source non malleable structure. We'll give a detailed construction of such non malleable structure in our paper. So, here the unbalanced means the input sources have different lengths. More precisely, we need the y to be several times longer than x. This requirement is necessary if we want the length of the leakage to be several times of the length of x. And the tempering function is like the independent tempering. The only difference is that now we allowed f to depend on also on some leakage information from y. And the security requirement is similar to the original two source non-malleable extractor. So given the leakage, we now can compute the x1 tutor and x2 tutor from the x1. So finally, for the case of x3 tutor and y3 tutor, using the previous idea, we can compute the x3 tutor and the y3 tutor from x1 and the leakage from y1. This also implies that these three tutor can be computed from y1 and the leakage. However, none of x3 tutor and y3 tutor can be computed from y1. So to solve this problem, the idea is by letting the tempering function of y1 to simply output a constant y star. This y star satisfies that for every possible output, one can always find a proper x that lets the two source non malleable extractor to output s given the second sources is equal to y star. We show in our paper that we can always find such a y star with higher probability. Then for the tempering of x1, since it can compute the z3 tilde, it can also output an x that lets the two source non malleable extractor to output a z3 tilde. Therefore, we can actually represent the tempering of Z3 as an independent tempering from the source X1 and Y1, which means that we can also reduce the security to the underlying two source non malleable structures for this case. So, by the end, we briefly mentioned some interesting open problems that are related to this work. The first is whether we can construct multi-source non-malleable extractors against tempering functions that are beyond the cover-free tempering. And the second one is in the setting of multi-source non-malleable extractor, whether we can achieve lower mean entropy requirements, say polylock in the lens of each input source. And the final one is are there other applications of the multi-source non-malleable extractor? And thank you for your listening.